You just want to make sure we always are getting it correct. Um, your brother identified as he, him, correct? Yes. Gotcha. Perfect. Um, tell me your brother's name, even though I know it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Julio Santos um, the third, And I actually wanted to make sure that was right um, when it's in print. Third. Because uh, I know it's just been Julio Santos, and gotcha. it's just important, important for us to have the third on there. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Yeah, we'll yeah. make sure we, we definitely have the third. Um, I want to start really happy. I really, that's important to me. So tell me about Julio Santos the third, and also tell me about your favorite part about your relationship with him. Um, he, you know, he was just a fantastic kid, and he is still fantastic somewhere out in this big universe. Um, he, you know, he had this tremendous fashion sense, which I did not get any of that. Um, but he was just, he's a great guy. He was just his genuine self all the time. Um, and you know, I, I miss that. I miss, um, you know, he's the youngest, he's the baby. And I missed, you know, him, you know, calling me and asking me how to, um, get, he was trying to fry an egg and he didn't put anything in the pan first. So, you know, it's stuck. He's like, how do I get that out? I'm like, you have to just either throw that away or soak it for the next thousand years. Like it's never going to come out. Um, he had this dry, like sense of humor, this dry wit, um, you know, if he was judging you or he was being funny. Um, so just things like that. He was a genuine guy. Just, you know, he was a great person to have in this world. Um, Melanie, I do want to move into, well, well first off, he was 22, correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know this could be a harsh move on, but I do want to move over into sort of, a. What happened? I, I mean, of course, we covered this back in 2015, um, you know, but just as a reminder, you know, sort of what happened when he went missing and, and how were you alerted to everything that went on? I'm sorry. What was that last part? How are you alerted to everything? Were you was it a call? You know, how did everything come to you uh, when he went missing? Oh, um, he one of his friends or one of the. A person that he was with um, messaged me. And let me know that they had gone out and um, they hadn't heard from him since the night before. So it was like, he went missing Friday and they didn't reach out until, or was it Thursday? I can't remember. No, I can't remember. Um, I think they went out Thursday and didn't reach out until Friday. And um, so I heard through them and, you know, started kind of calling his phone and police department, you know, calling hospitals um, and just trying to figure out what happened. We actually made um, flyers and we went downtown, um, you know, chatted with all the police department down there. And um, that's basically how it went the next few days. And they were at Barbarella's, correct? That was the last place? Right. Gotcha. Um, and the last thing I kind of want to touch on this before we move forward is just how long did it take? I know in your email, you mentioned to me, of course, he was subsequently found out in Town Lake there in Lady Bird Lake, you know, how long from when he went missing and you started making all those calls till he was actually found? No, I have to, I want to say four days, if memory serves. Um, you know, a lot of that is, you know, it's stuff you, it's not you want to forget, but it's also kind of like yourself protecting yourself. And, um, you know, sometimes I, I can't remember, like there's certain things I can't remember, but there are other things that won't go away. And um, so that's kind of where we are. Um, but it was, I think three or four days. And I remember reading in our article we did back in 2015, police initially said this was suspicious, right? And then I believe they came back later and said, of, co of course they felt that there was no foul play, you know, to hear those running through your head of like, you know, what, what happened to my brother? Like, how was that for you when it was kind of mixed signals? Well, we knew from the beginning and we still believe that this was not an accident. This is not a coincidence that's happening to these other gentlemen. Um, you know, Julio was responsible and for all of his belongings to be left at the club at Barbarella's behind the bars where they ended up, um, this is was highly unlike Julio just to leave his stuff, leave anything. And he everything was there. Um, you know, watching video from um when he was walking, 
um, it wasn't him. I mean, that's not how he looked. It's not how he presented himself. He, um, you know, just his demeanor for what we could see from the camera footage, that was not our brother. Um, so, you know, we've never believed for a moment that this was, you know, because he drank too much that night when he was out or it was just accidental. Um, so it's frustrating to hear that and to hear that it's kind of like open and shut. That's it. It's just accidental. You're not going to take anything else. And then you find out the next young man, then the next one. And then, you know, here we are two in as many months, you know, it's, they're too much the same to be just a coincidence. And I think that's the big thing. So of course, um, you know, Julio went, this happened back in 2015. And of course, I'm sure you all, no matter what it is, you're going to fight for those changes. You want safety. And and now it's seeming like we're getting that, you know, the last two, you've got Jason John and Jonathan Honey, two more, too many. And um, that brings me to today, city council, uh, council member Caudry's worked with a lot of these families. Um, and he's pushing right now. He's like, you, you know, there's temporary lighting, there's some fencing up, but they want halo cameras. They want those high resolution, high power. They want big lights on that trail. They want, you know, um, patrol from APD and DPS for you to see that that was approved today. And for you to see these permanent things coming in place, I know for you, it probably is a long time coming a little bit too late, but how does that feel to see that? Hey, this is going to get done. Well, we don't know if it's going to get done. We know they've adopted the resolution. We know what they're saying, but nothing's been done. Uh, things can be promised, you know, all around, but until there's action, like true action, true things come in, you know, to fruition. And right now it's just empty promises. And so, yeah, I mean, talk is cheap. Um, until we see some real action, then I don't believe anything. Um, you know, I don't believe that anything is going to happen until it happens. And you're right, because of course, um, interim city manager Garza has to, to implement those. So of course, like you said, this is the resolution that city council put through, but you're right. It's got to come down to the actual action and and the resolution that they would like him to fulfill. Um, that leads me to another thing that was part of this. Um, you know, I actually used to work in Louisville, Kentucky, and we had a big thing with this uh, where the bars, people were getting drugged. Um, and part of that safety measure is they want to look at things like, hey, these bars should really be offering uh, cards per se, where you can drop your drink and see if there's been tampered with, you know, do you feel like that's also a necessary step? You know, of course, the safety on the trail is big, but do you think it also starts with the bars and, and people maybe st stopping serving or, or people being able to have the option to make sure their drink hasn't been tampered with? Do you feel like it goes all the way back to there as well? I think so. I mean, it starts somewhere and everyone has been, you know, downtown on Rainy Street. And um, so, yes, I think some action needs to be taken with, you know, 6th Street and downtown. Um the bars and all of that to, you know, have something beneficial in place. Um, yeah, I think that would be helpful. I think that it starts somewhere. Well, and that's what I want. I want to acknowledge, Melanie, of course, a lot of this, and I think you said it like talk is cheap and that's, that's very valid. I know a lot of these questions can seem just like, Hey, we're waiting for that actual action. So I do want to acknowledge that, but I want to end with, you know, um, is there any message you would have for the Austin community or just everything that's happened. I know that's probably making you relive so much. Um, not that you don't live it every day uh, with your brother's passing, but you know, is there any message you would want to give to Austinites or even people in charge or police or anything? Is there anything else you felt that you want to say that I miss? Well, with the proposition for the safety concerns with the lights and the cameras and the fences, even if that is put into place, which heavy on the if, how long is it going to take? If they're going to adopt it and say, hey, we're gonna start this, is it gonna be in five years, in 10 years? And in the meantime, we're still losing our young men. Um, you know, if APD is gonna have a police presence, this is going to fizzle out. And right now, what I've seen on the news is that APD is kind of, um, I don't know if it's happening overnight, but in the proposition, is it going to be, you know, APD is gonna be there at nighttime. Not during the day, you know, we need to have a police presence when it's dark because this is happening in the middle of the night. Um, it doesn't make a difference if somebody's there, you know, seven o'clock in the evening. Um, but, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm afraid that it's going to, when it starts to affect commerce is when something's really going to be imp implemented. Nobody wants to move here. Nobody wants to, you know, go downtown and have fun and spend money. People aren't going to want to do that. Um, and, you know, if 
if for whatever reason our officials and are keeping things kind of hush hush if something is wrong, which is the burning question, we're already scared. You can't scare us anymore. We're already worried. We're already scared. You know, we have kids, you know, my son's Julio's age when, you know, Julio went missing. My nephews and my niece, they're that same age. They like to go downtown. We shouldn't have to worry when we go downtown and if we drink and have fun, we shouldn't have to worry about not coming home. Um, and we should be able to go out as a, you know, and with our friends and just have fun and not have to worry about, I'm going to find somebody in the river. Um, you know, I'm afraid that if these aren't, the fence is going to end up being the memorial, the crosses, the flowers, the memorials that people put down by the river, that's going to end up being the fence um, until we have a permanent solution, which, you know, hopefully we will soon, but we'll see what happens with that.